We're on the air. We are on the air. Welcome back to Suzilla here at Wenatchee Insurance in the lovely Wenatchee, Washington. I'm Susie. That's Matt. Yep. Yep. And we are here talking about stuff. I have no idea what our topic is this morning. Do you have a thought? Well, yeah, I'm going to get into the, the whole pride. Oh, that's true. It is nearly June. It is nearly June. We've talked about this multiple every year. Yep, and we're not going to stop. And then some. <laughs> yeah. We're proud to be part of Pride. Uh, well, it's it's one of those goofball things that, that, that regularly we get pushed back for. Yes, that's true. Because it's, it's got... It's got mental blocks with people. Yeah, um, you know... We we did an event and we we had an individual that was connected, and they were worried about us. Rainbow went up. Yeah, they didn't want that to be part of the problem. Yeah, unfortunately, it has become politicized. It shouldn't be, but it is. Um, because it's not a political thing; it's a person thing. That's a human rights thing. That's what I said in a very different manner. But yeah. yes, it's a human thing. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go with this. I'll go to the seventies. It's human rights. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, human rights is another thing that's been completely politicized. Yeah. So yes, we, we we have some individuals out there that that feel that people standing up for themselves is political. Yes, and we have people who have moral stances about um, these about people standing up for themselves. No, I'll go with immoral stance. But well, okay, it, it's it's a, it, they find that it's it moral as a category, not as in moral as it is. Yeah, because let's 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 get into this because we are, you know, on the older side of things. Oh, we are. We're, we're mid fifties. Before. We're both 54, so it's in our mid 50s. And we've seen some things. We've seen some things. And we've, we've also got a, a, a child that is graduating from high school. Yay! So proud of him. So we've, we've got, you know, and so let's, let's get into the, the, some of the nuts and bolts of this, you know. Let's. I'm going to go straight to Teen Vogue on this one. <laughs> okay. And the reason Teen, Vo uh, Teen Vogue does surprisingly interesting actual journalistic work. Okay, and this was this was a, a piece published in March 13th, 2024. Okay, so just a couple of months ago. Okay, and according to Gallup data published today mm -hmm. and gathered in 2023. Of which more than twelve thousand Americans age eighteen and older were surveyed. Guess on how many Gen Z adults identify as LGBTQ plus? Twenty five percent. A little bit high. It's actually one fifth. So okay, about twenty percent. One in five, which is about the rate in Washington State that uninsured drivers drive around. <laughs> <laughs> Strangely. That is an odd coincidence. That is an odd coincidence. So you cannot say that if you're driving around on insurance because you're an LGBTQI no. plus person. No. Uh, cons and considering the millennial generation, mm -hmm. age 27 to 42, it's only about 10%. So it's, it's, a, it's a heck of a jump. Yeah. And I, I, I like well what that tells me. Is that people are, as it were, we'll find that some of the uh, millennials and Gen Xs and um, the boomers never would answer those polls honestly for fear. Well, here we go. Numbers fell to less than 5% for Gen X, silent generation. Well, isn't most of the silent generation dead? That's actually very key because if you think about it on the amount of violence, mm -hmm. the amount of bullying, mm -hmm. the they have killed off 
the older population. It's true. There are, are some out, out there. I mm-hmm. mean, there's on uh, TikTok, one of my favorite TikTok channels is the old gays. Yeah. Um, I, they, I don't I know. Say- I want to say they might be, they're sort of on the cusp between Boomer and, and, and uh, Silence. Yeah, they're on the deep 70s. They're deep, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's a it's a so, well. There's it's a variety mm-hmm. of ages, but yeah, they're they're boomers, and, and the top edge is probably silent. But yeah, and, and you know how you know I but, think we've moved you know we I think we've moved beyond being you know wanting to kill off our own population. Not everybody's. Moved uh, I, I, I would hope so. It's, uh, it's one of those those hopes I have. It's a nice hope, but I don't believe that's yeah, entirely I, true. I, I just look at January sixth and tell me that we don't want it, and when that certain individuals. And yes, certain, indi- you know, certain individuals are always going to be jerks mm-hmm. about that. Yeah, but that's that's the important thing is as you know, even though we're on the other side other side of 50, we're business owners. Mm-hmm. Where are our peers, our you know, our peers, our customers, where are they going to come from? They're going to come from an LGBTQ friendly audience and it's that population is growing mm-hmm. um steadily and to sit there and target that uh, target the community with harassment is does not make sense as a business owner no but to be but to be honest yeah. let's be realistic though if you are going to be lgbtqia mm-hmm. um friendly yeah you got to be genuine about it. You can't just rainbow wash. There's a really interesting conversation because uh, I've got friends that are that are both marketers and gay, and the, one of the most interesting conversations we, we we had was the the Target and the rainbow washing, because Target originally came out with some really horrible discriminatory policies, and they said, mm-hmm. "Oh my gosh, we got to do something," and then they came back and said, "Okay, let's." Let's hire some LGBTQ designers and design some pride-friendly stuff. Yeah, they did it last year. Um, and boy, did they get blowback. They did it for a couple of years, and last year was a real blowback moment. And they're, they've scaled it back this year. They did, yeah. But there's something we, that, that, that we've got to remember. If you're out in the middle of the country... Mm-hmm. And you, like you're going, you're, you're rolling to your, you know, you might only see a rainbow T-shirt in a box store. Mm, true, because because that's where they are. Because okay, if you're in mm-hmm. in in nowhere, Kansas, that might be the only shopping opportunity out there. It is because not everyone, you know, in this day and age, has access to you know direct contact with designers to purchase goods and services. I think that when Target did that contract, mm-hmm. they were not being entirely disingenuous. Mm-hmm. I think they were genuinely, I think there was an effort to really be uh, sincere to support the pride concept, mm-hmm. the pride programs. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's why I can't completely throw the big box stores in the, in, in the rainbow washing underneath the bus is however it. there are some companies that are li- that are truly it's like let's just throw a rainbow on this one and they don't give two craps oh, yeah. about the community oh yeah and you know the the pew potatoes yeah where where they they go in and they, they say okay let's, let's temporarily mask up so we we, we can attract dollars mm-hmm. um and yes there are individuals out there like that you know, they, they will not talk, you know, about protections. In the they won't milliliter. walk the walk. They'll just paint. The- they'll open they'll, they'll open the cash register. Yeah, it's all about the dollars. And that's been true for every disenfranchised group. Mm-hmm. And it's in it or every um, every kind of, of charitable situation or support situation that might make a few bucks. The first time we really saw this mm-hmm. was with breast cancer. Um, Susan Cohen? The, the, yeah, Susan G. Komen mm-hmm. and all that kind of good stuff. And the that the whole pink washing. 
that's where we really saw it first and it's branched out into other varieties. Mm -hmm. This is where things like uh, the donations at the grocery store, you know, check out. Yeah, which is like a give a dollar to charity or whatever. Yeah, you'd like to round up for charity? It's like, oh, okay, what charity? And then, okay, here's the thing. When you don't think, you think mm -hmm. about this one. Yeah, maybe they ended up donating $175,000 that mm -hmm. other people donated. How much money did they make in that interest-bearing account that they kept in their coffers? It's really hard to say because, I mean, there is this weird gaming of, of non prophecy and gaming of volunteerism. Yeah, that's true. Um, that, that that is done, and, and if you look at things honestly, it's like, yeah, I, there are banks that make money off of food stamps. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And and it is, it's 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 not a, a new con, it, but it's it's one of those things that that's it's got. Let's you know poke the elephant in the room. Um, it is it is you know kind of a, important to to look at that. Is like okay, well. You know, uh, a good example was the, the 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 transgender kid who won at Cashmere. Yeah, transgender girl who won um, a foot race. It was cross country or something. I wanted to say sixteen hundred meter. Uh, it was a is a race. It was it's, it was it's a, a good race, and yeah. and it was like, oh my gosh, what are people doing attacking this kid? And there was just there was death threats against that child. It, it was horrible comments, and we're like, "It's a child." You know, I don't want to necessarily stick a needle in someone's arm and measure hormone levels. I certainly don't want to, you know, check down their pants to what they got. Mm -hmm. And people were making all sorts of assumptions mm -hmm. that were just quite frankly gross. It's like, no, that's a kid. We've they've made a standard years ago on hey, it's it's the identity they choose to adopt. And no, it's not a choose. It's 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 not the identity they choose to adopt. It's the identity that they are. They're finally allowing to be out there for other people to see. The the reason I'm I'm using choose there mm -hmm. is because it's a conscious choice of what you display. Okay. And yes, it can be met with hostility. Oh, absolutely it can. And if you look at someone that that is that, that goes through and endures hostility for that, mm -hmm. it, absolutely I'm going to sit there and it's like, okay, yeah. they That is a choice that they made that should be empowered because, oh my gosh, they're no one in there would make that to get l that level of abuse and scrutiny and bullying. No one, people should. Yeah, I get what you're getting. I get what you're getting at there. I know it's 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 a it's a weird concept because yeah, I know Cause, because they they could have chosen not to be in the they track could have team. Chosen to hide. They could have chosen to hide. They could have chosen to not be on the track team. They could have chosen to. To present as what other they, people they that they could have chosen to present mm -hmm. is what they think other people want them to see, yeah. rather than what they actually are. Yeah. And they, I applaud them for being who they actually are, and mm -hmm. publicly because that's scary as hell. Oh, absolutely! And then it, then it was this 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 weird old. Well, they need to you know go through hormones, and the people saying, "Oh, they 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 need to go through hormones." are the same people that say, hey, kids can't... You can't have gender-affirming gender care. care. And it's just like... Make up make, your stinking mind. Make up your minds, you know. The, you know, kid, kids, you know, and parents have that difficult, difficult decision. And yes, sometimes it means fighting out at the world. Mm -hmm. um, and, and doing that protection. And I... You know, applaud those parents that they, they took that abuse. And the um, the other thing that's not being addressed in, in, in you know, the, the elephant in the room is these events are there to teach kids sportsmanship. 
Yeah. And community. And all it was put on display was Kashmir's hostility. Yeah, unfortunately. And if I was an organizer looking to sit there and, hey, where can I put my next event? I'm not going to pick Kashmir. Mm Mm-hmm. Because they weren't supportive of kids, Mm -hmm. period. And the sad fact is events bring in money. True, especially in sports. Hey, one thing I don't know is how did Cashmere High School respond to this? Not very good. Cashmere High School has had a a, a history of that level of hostility. Mm -hmm. Uh, There was a a while ago... uh, uh, African American kid talking about on how he was harassed through mm-hmm. high school. Yeah, um, Cashmere's always been very. Uh, they, they've always had a, a reputation for being narrow minded. And it's bigoted. and and yeah, it's it's one of those things. So uh, this is actually a rather old study because I, I look at business opportunities. Mm-hmm. Two years ago, we, we uh, our, our partner was, was on one of the local pride boards, and they were looking for um, food trucks, food vendors. Yeah. And yeah, there was there was a there was a couple in, in my Facebook group that, that I kicked to the curb because the, of their hostility, and it's because someone said, "Well, why would anyone want to do business?" And it's like, you're not a business person. And I just point blank said, you're not a business person. So they were, they, they piped up and said, we don't want to do business at a pride event because we don't want to support pride. Yes. Which now if they had just, but if they had set up business, Hmm. despite their personal hostile attitude towards the community, wouldn't that have been disingenuous? That would have been the whole rainbow washing out there just for the paycheck. It would have presented them an opportunity to discover what it's about. Exactly. And which they were completely closed off to even thinking about. And, and they was like, no, no, this is evil and bad. And this was, you know, this was, you know, shortly after COVID. So all of the restaurants, all of all of the events people were hungry for money. Uh-huh. And their bigotry mm-hmm. outweighed their business. Yep. Because they were unwilling to open themselves up to new experiences, and the the and it's like okay, this is gonna be a big one. Mm-hmm. Every food vendor that went in there sold out. Oh my gosh, it was a crushingly amazing opportunity for for those vendors. There weren't very many; there's like three. Yeah, and they ran out of food. Yeah. I mean, they they just crushed it that day. Yeah, they they were the the forecast was like two thousand and it's more like it, six. It's more like six showed up. Yeah, I mean it it was it was a massive one. Now this is a little bit a little bit dated because it's back in two thousand and nineteen, mm-hmm. and the draw. Um, they're worth annually. Nine hundred and seventeen billion annually due to Pride Month. That's on how much revenue that brings to businesses directly. Okay. So it's a it's a it's a it's definitely a revenue generator. It is a massive revenue generator. Yeah, always has been. Um, I mean, any kind of big festival situation is mm-hmm. this is a nationwide for an entire month. So yeah, it's gonna generate it's gonna generate business. It's gonna generate business for the planners. It's gonna generate business for the vendors. It's gonna generate business for small businesses and the big businesses and everybody that wants to get on board. But the question is, are those back to the whole rainbow washing? Are the big are the businesses that are doing this doing it because they want to support pride or because they want the dollars? Or both. Because you can support pride and want the dollars. That's okay. Well uh, but be a genuine. Good example. Well, we're genuine, so I'm not. I don't worry about. Not that you anymore. being genuine. Worry about them being genuine. One of the things that we did with ours was we were all about the giveaway. Oh yeah, always have been. Um, if we got something to give away. We will. Yeah, I mean, last year we gave out. It was four thousand rainbow bags. Yep. I 
mean, it was it was it was an incredible amount. It was a lot. Um, we're not we're not able to do that this year. Nope, we're on a we are on a uh, tighter budget this year. And it's it's one of those things. It's like okay. Is it transactional based? That's a good question. That's really important to, to address. Because there's so much of our business is not transactional based. No. And it's we're viewed as kind of oddballs for that. True. When you when you go in and it's like you look to see, okay, are they what sort of transactions are they? You know, are they there genuinely celebrating? Mm-hmm. Are they there saying, hey, have these tools? Mm-hmm. Or are they saying, hey, here, let's have this this cheap pair of sunglasses and uh, do you want to sign up? Ah, yeah. It's the delivery. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Are they, are they there with their clipboards and... And the you know giant bag of super cheap you know fifty nine cent a pair of sunglasses, mm-hmm. which yeah sure I'm all rainbow happy here sign this <laughs> and you can get a free air freshener you know because the next thing is 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 are the are the people for that business are they there being paid yeah. Or are they there because they want to be? Or they're there because they want to be. Or it cuts some combination of the two. And then that's that's a really big one there because we could we could tell pretty quick on who was paid to be there. Yeah. Who is who was there and who was there because they were told to be there. Mm-hmm. And that's consistent. I mean, what that's that's gonna be true of every event is all right, your turn to work the weekend. So you're you know, but I don't want to go. Yeah, you're gonna go, it's your turn. Well, that's, you know, that's, that's on how, ba- you know, business kind of is, is forced into that, that late stage capitalism. The only way outside of that, and, and I've, I've talked about this more than once, is what are, what are the community infrastructures? Mm-hmm. Is it, hey, let's, let's go to this bank on the hillside that we've been going forever mm-hmm. who, who will occasionally, you know, throw a chamber of commerce party and, you know, sends all the money out of state mm-hmm. or, or do we support a small community run credit union that is out there sponsoring events on their facility? Um, that embraces diversity mm-hmm. and I know which direction I like to go. And you, you, you start to look at it regularly in, in that community infrastructure and, and how you build it. If you're just occasionally, you know, Oh, well, Hey, let's do it on this special occasion. Let's shop downtown mm-hmm. versus, Hey, I regularly get my groceries, you know, from this small corner store. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I regularly use this, you know, small insurance agency. Mm -hmm. I regularly, you know, go to this meat store. Mm -hmm. And you you start to build this infrastructure that's diverse. Yes. That's community based yes. and there there was one last week or the week before uh was it mima's salsa uh-huh. out of Inyat? yes good salsa by the way and they were really proud of them that they got a slot in one of the local natural food stores yeah and they had this big wall display about the, the salsa making and the different types mm-hmm. and they, they posted it and and you know those little businesses helping out little businesses are what keeps wealth in our little town that's true 
and it can help make these little businesses turn into bigger businesses, which still keeps wealth in the town. And so, yes, that's that's the that whole economic engine. Mm -hmm. um, I had it was it was one of my buddies that is a a, a barber. Mm -hmm. One of their buddies piped up about uh, the, the transgender kid and and how wrong and whatnot. And not only are they, were they a barber, they they also do boxing. Oh, like the, the, there's a really weird connotation with 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 the macho ness that, that really came out in, in COVID. Yeah, and. I'm like looking at at this individual, and it's it's a it's a it's a matter of of losing their minds because a the marketplace. Mm -hmm. How inclusive of a marketplace is out there that you razor cuts? I've been talking razor cuts in the community for decades. Oh, yeah. You know, who's got an undercut? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, 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 it's one of those things. And so, you know, to have a barber sit there and bad mouth mm -hmm. the LGBTQ community, it's like, okay, that's kind of really stupid. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just point blank. That's really, really stupid. Just. Because not only are you know the you know your your clients that you serve in, the people on your left and right. Oh yeah. And it's just like oh my gosh. And then the next thing, it's like you're you're big on the on the boxing, and you've got a group that's being bullied. Gee, how much could they use your assistance? Mm -hmm. Well, here's the question though. We don't know why this, I don't know why this barber has yeah. this opinion, has this attitude mm -hmm. about this community, about yeah. the LGBTQIA yeah. community. If they just kept their yap shut and didn't talk about their, their, their negative bias, mm -hmm. maybe they would get LGBTQIA clients, but would that be safe for those clients? That's one of those ones you never know. Because, I mean, you, you honestly, they should be seeking out folks who are not going to be even peripherally abusive. Yes. And the, the sad thing is, is how long do they want to be in the industry mm -hmm. looking at the numbers that are that are coming forward? But if they're looking at the num if they're looking at the industry mm -hmm. and looking at the numbers and they're saying, oh, my God, they're not going to maybe they'll change the way they do their business, but they probably won't change their personal attitude. That's where I have an issue. Because if you go, oh no, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm so supportive. But if you, but behind the scenes are going, rah, 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 mm -hmm. I don't like that. That, that kind of, that kind of, of, of well, lying. That two-facedness. That two-facedness, two yeah. the disingenuated, dis, the, the lies yeah. bothers me a lot. It really does. Well, yeah. And it should. And it should bother anybody. I I think if you're... The, the only way that you're able to identify lies is watching behavior over a long period of time. In this situation, yeah. Sometimes lying. No. In any situation. Okay. The only way you can identify someone that's lying is you look at their behavior over a long period of time. And it's, it's, it's one of those incredible things. You know, hey, are they talking about Section 1557 of the Affordable Care Act mm -hmm. in January? Mm -hmm. Or, hey, are they going out and they're promoting a, a, a fierce opportunity in March where you provide headshots? Mm -hmm. Do they join the local chamber of commerce or do they go join the greater Seattle business network that is the state's LGBTQ that, that, oh my gosh, actually supports businesses. Supports businesses. <laughs> yeah. And these are, these are really important questions because 
if you want to have a gay Wall Street, you have to build it. Mm -hmm. The scary thing is, is yes, in the financial industry, there are a number of companies that actively sought out transgendered individuals for how their brain worked uh -huh. and their networking ability uh -huh. so they could do investments. Yes. I saw that study. That was really in that, that report. That was really interesting. It really, really was. So yes, me as someone who is in a financial industry will look and see what advantages and bring them out. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I will value opinions that are different than mine. That's super important. It's that, super important to value opinions that are different than yours. And it's also super important to acknowledge that sometimes those opinions are a bunch of bullshit. Well, yeah, it's the, you know, if you get back to the, you know, you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. There you go. How hard is that to live by? It's really hard for some individuals. That's true. And at the same time, someone calling me out and saying, hey, you know what? You're wrong here. And they can, they you know, back it up with, with some. That's the key. Can they back it up with actual facts? Or, or something that, that that's just not horrible. Yeah. You know? It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, when you've got somebody who's their only reason for hating somebody who is LGBTQI is because the Bible, you're going to have to do better than that. Well, yeah, because it contradicts itself in multiple places. Absolutely. And it's, it's like, dudes, dudes, I see you sitting there eating shrimp over your with your tattooed hand and you're telling mixed polyester and you're telling me this is wrong. You're picking and choosing. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, I, I, I've been around the block too many times. Yeah, um, I, and I, I don't aspire to that. I aspire to building stronger communities, being inclusive. And while we don't have the funds to go out there and do a tour like we did last year, we're still going to have fun. Oh yeah, we're still going to you know, we're still going to be supportive. Yeah. However, this time we get to. Sit back. We get to participate rather than and participate. Yeah. And for the first time in years. Yeah. How weird is that going to be? <laughs> we get to sit back and participate. We get to be Brett Maverick at the card table for one year yeah. and watch everyone move. Yeah. That's actually, a, that's a, I love that analogy. So, hey, Friday, we got our, our equity summit. And go, 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 go. That's going to be amazing. We're going to have such a good time with that. And then, you know, the following day is Snohomish Pride. Yep. Awesome pie store there. Oh, my God. Um, I don't know what how many we'll make, too, because we are broke as a joke. Uh, but we'll, we will do our best to, to go out and, and adventure and have fun. Yep. And take care of people because that is what we do. That's right. So, hey, next week we'll be talking to you. It's Pride Month. Have fun. Yeah. Have fun. Be safe. Be safe. And take care of your neighbors. Bye-bye for bye. now. Bye.